care Erina and I've got Ali with me today and we're looking at a cushion. What have we got here in front of us today? So here we've got the Equigel Protector, which is a nice um, low maintenance cushion. Um, obviously if we've got clients who have pressure injury risk factors and considerations, the OT or the prescribing therapist would be looking um, at suitable pressure cushion options for them. For occupational therapists, always looking to support people with how they are sitting, typically people, older adults with mobility concerns, uh, people living with disabilities, they spend a lot of time sitting and that can increase the risk of developing a pressure area. A lot of people would refer to that as like a bed sore. Um, clinically, we use more of the term pressure area and there's different ways of assessing if someone's at a risk of pressure area, one of those tools being water load. Correct, yep. yes. Um, I have some skills. <laughs> so that allows us to go through sort of a checklist in a, a way for the general public to understand of categorizing some different risk factors to be, is somebody at a risk of developing pressure areas or do they already have pressure areas? And then what are some ways to decrease the risk or um, help heal those as well? Yeah. And one of those ways is helping um, offload where the weight is and where the pressure is dispersed through um, how someone's sitting. Typically, we're looking at what you would call ischial tuberosity, which is sort of the back of the top of the femur slash pelvis for the general public. So high up on the bottom. Um, as well as through pelvis, lower spine, so different pieces, as well as comfort through the thigh as well. So why would an occupational therapist be looking at this type of cushion? So this one um, is a really good low maintenance option. Um, some other cushions require some level of maintenance or ongoing checking. With the Equigel cushion, as long as it's put on the right way and the right direction, we know that um, it's going to do its job properly. So. This one here is, um, we call it a dry polymer gel. On the top of the cushion, we've got that tight grid structure with that thin gel wall. And underneath, we've got that big grid structure with a thicker gel wall. And it's got a little bit of contouring here at the back. Essentially, the client will sit on the cushion. All of these little columns will buckle under the weight of them sitting on it, but we still get good, nice airflow through the cushion as well. So when you're saying low maintenance, because there's no, you don't really have to, you know, review and adjust it all the time and referring to more products that are like air. Yeah. So that need right. to check their air pressure all the time. And I think clinically we, they can often be the right choice. Um, but one of the main situations that we find ourselves with air cushions is that they never get reviewed. Um, people lose the pump, um, no one really checks on that, especially in the home environment, but also it can be a risk factor in residential aged care, hospital, uh, disability group homes. Of, it's another thing to check and that can, even if it is better pressure relieving, the fact that it's not getting checked then means it's not better pressure relieving. So. Sometimes something that may not, not saying that this doesn't pressure relieve really well, it does, but it's a clinical consideration that an occupational therapist in particular would take of going, is somebody actually going to maintain and check that on a regular status that it needs or something that really, once it's set right, it's going to be correct and needs minimal input may um, usually be uh, the best thing to consider. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some other cushions other will have like foam and gel and different things in them as well. Yeah, so there's hybrid cushions that might be a combination of foam and air or foam and fluid um, or they're just solely made of the one material. So I guess it depends on the client's risk factors for developing a pressure injury as well as um, what sort of positioning support they might need that's going to help determine um, what sort of cushion is going to be appropriate and what material we're looking for in yep. that cushion. And then we'll then be looking at the actual dimensions of the cushion. What's it sitting on? Is it on a wheelchair? Is it on a recliner? Exactly. Um, height of the cushion, yep. how that's going to impact the rest of the seating as well. Yep. So that height now is going to increase where that person's sitting, which is going to increase um, or yeah, it's going to increase the height that they're sitting, which can then um, actually change pressure relieving in terms of if it's a wheelchair and where their foot plates are adjusted. So exactly. sometimes I always feel that equipment at face value, like it's just a cushion. How hard could it be to prescribe? Mm -hmm. It can be really difficult because 
you change one thing and then sometimes you can create another pressure area issue in somewhere else um, or you could change a postural thing in somewhere else so it takes time for an occupational therapist to just walk their way through that what's the impact on other things and then what's the easiest solution moving forward that's clinically appropriate for them um, in terms of cushions, I always think about continence as well. So yeah. with this type of cushion, what are our considerations with continence? If someone's uh, living with incontinence, um, do we have overlays, protectors? Obviously, rubber's easier to clean. Yeah, definitely. So lots of different cushions have different cover options, but again, that'll come down to that person's continence management plan, um, also their pressure injury risk and balancing all of those things. To make the appropriate choice for that individual so, yeah so lots of things to consider yeah we could talk about cushions all afternoon I <laughs> and, feel. and often they do in like a whole day education course for occupational therapists so there's yeah a lot to consider there uh, the main takeaways I think for cushions if if you're uncomfortable in sitting or you've got a loved one um, or someone that you're supporting that's uncomfortable you think maybe at a risk of pressure areas you need to be liaising primarily with an occupational therapist to link up with wonderful equipment suppliers to trial some goods to make sure that there's a wonderful plan moving forward. So, awesome. I think we've covered enough for cushions today. Thanks, Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.